Hello everybody and welcome to our second 4.x patch review. Sorry for being a bit late on this, I wanted to review this, uh, do this video in general a bit earlier, but I, uh, I had some health issues that need taking care of, sorry for that, but well, the patch is kind of done for now, we're out uh, we're at the last two weeks of it. I was thinking of not waiting for the main event to happen because it did take a, quite a while to start and I was not gonna cover it. But as I but as I was about to finish my notes on the patch in general, they announced the event starting, so I decided to wait. So we will be covering mostly everything in this version, the new Archon Quest acts, the new areas added, and lastly the main event of this version, and we will do it in this order. As you can see, this is a voiced over video, the background footage is from my streams over on Twitch uh, slash Leodogu Live if you want to follow and uh, just, you know, hang around as we're playing Genshin, and yeah, <laughs> that... that I just wanted to mention that, that this is, again, this is not recorded with a camera as before. <laughs> so let's begin with Act 3 and Act 4 of the Archon Quest. Overall, I didn't really like these acts, and I've seen many share the dislike of Act 3 specifically, and I can agree a lot on that. I understand, and I I like that they wanted to show, to show you how life in the fortress is, but it just kept going and going and going and repeating and repeating and I was just so tired of it and many and it's just nothing really happening on the main plot. I also really got frustrated that your options didn't matter at all. You get two, three options sometimes when waking up in a cycle and I don't know if I did something to affect this but I couldn't choose what to do. You usually get like two options like work or skip work using coupons and no matter what I chose, I was never the, the game never allowed me to do it. The, the game would always tell me, oh, there aren't any more clues, let's go to work, or there aren't any more clues to work, let's skip it, and some weird stuff. And I was like, why give me the option in the first place? Uh, again, I don't know if I did something myself that caused this, but I wanted to skip work and do some investigating, let's say. No, got to go to work. I want to go to work because I got nothing else, there's nothing work investigate. it's like, what, what, why do I have the option, just don't, don't give me the option anyways, right, just go with the flow, it's like, do it, do it automatically, I don't know, but it's a real weird thing that actually pissed me off, um, and then, and then, I just slowly went crazy with the repeats of stuff, it reminded me of Sumeru's Act 2, and the pain slowly, slowly started to creep up, Nothing of note also happens in this act for the entirety of the story. And again, good idea to immerse the player in the life inside of Meropid, but this isn't the way. It lasts way too long, there's a lot of repeats, and it just isn't it. And then the act just ends in the middle of all of these repeats in a way, and then the first half of Act 4 is the same thing almost. Like, it's. Act 3 just ends in the middle of doing these repeats with work. And then Act 4 begins, and it still has, like, a lot of this stuff with Meropid, and then the story actually picks up, and it's... Wow. Like, yeah, only at the second half-ish of Act 4 do things actually happen. Uh, and that's when, thing, uh, when, that's when things do get interesting. But when, but when I am so tired of the previous act, uh, of the previous one act and half, do you really expect me to not be tired and want it, wanting it to be over? So, up until now, for the entirety of the Archon Quest, we had a very good first act, a horrendous second act that most of it could have not existed and nothing would change for the story, but the pacing would have been a hundred times better, a very boring and uneventful act 3 that hurts the pacing insanely, but it, it has a good sentiment behind it, but unfortunately it fails, and then Act 4, whose first half is also pretty painful to go through, uh, only for things to actually pick up in the second half and things to, and, you know, people to get actually, you know, hyped for the last part most likely, or we'll see an interlude. But it's not looking that good overall. Uh, I hope and th I think that we will get a nice ending to the story and perhaps an interlude chapter might tie stuff more nicely together, give some more uh, context on other things, anyway, anything. But for now, the pacing issues are hitting the story really hard and then, again, 
almost two acts of this Archon quest are just not un uh, not fully unnecessary for one of them, but man, oh man, it's it's not it, it's not uh, helping the Archon quest for me. And so, being done with the story, let's check the new area. We will start with the quests in it so that we can, uh, you know, follow up with Archon Quest. There are two big que big world quests here compared to the three in the first area. Um, there's an there's a quest following the Central Institute and people around it, and then there's a quest inside the Meropid Fortress. I was okay with the Institute quest, it was okay, a fine length with stuff happening and a good pace, except for the end where you need to cleanse the cubes and you need to teleport back and forward four times to go to each cube, but as far as I know there's no like uh, the, this hydro thingy that like moves you around, as far as I know there's not, uh, one of these doesn't spawn every time you clear a cube, so you need to teleport back to the central one, glide to a cube, do the cube, teleport back, go to a cube, you know, that was really bad at the end. But other than that, it was an actually okay world quest. I can't say the same for the Meropid quest. I went into it thinking that it would be very interesting, seeing like we're in Meropid, it looks like it's a really cool place, but it ended up as Act 3 2.0, or well, the opposite, because I did this quest before the Arkhan quest. I thought I would see an interesting so story, but the pacing was really bad for me, and I was severely tired by the end of the quest. Also, come on, this shit again? It's so clear the kid isn't normal. His hands are all fucked up, he knows way too much things. Like, it's, it, you're not trying to hide that this kid is, is special, right? Uh, like, okay, it's tied to the, the, the narcissist in Ordo, I can't say that. <laughs> um, but... It's just, once again, back and forward, back and forward, get coupons, do, uh, sleep, coupons, sleep, coupons, sleep. Here's a black screen with three paragraphs of text with a, with a story. I'm like, bro, 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 bro. The pacing of the quest completely ruined it for me, and then the story, to be honest, wasn't that charismatic for me to care. So I wasn't that happy with this quest. It, it uh, to be honest, it did definitely hurt Act Three more that I played this. But to be honest, again, they're very similar. If you do one or the other, doesn't doesn't matter the 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 order. You're going to get tired of this of this format of do work, sleep, do work, sleep, on both of on, on Act Three and this quest. It's yeah, like okay, you get, might tell me you know split them apart, but like come on, like the, the, this is not the solution. So on to the exploration side of the new area, let's go, because we're done with the quests. That's that. Those are my opinions. So the area, it was pretty small. So there, 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 isn't a hu there wasn't a huge amount of stuff to do, but there were some nice landmarks around. The Institute Ruins are very cool. I also liked many of the secret areas, uh, especially the one after the Seahorse Boss, where you work on the Mysterious Ore. That was a nice sort of side quest uh, thingy. The local legends were definitely better this time. Um, I asked previously for elemental neutral enemies, and indeed, while these, uh, these local legends aren't constantly affected by an element, they do have some resistances to Anemo and Geo, I believe, uh, because uh, one, of the, one of the enemies is uh, like the Fatui, en Fatui enemy, which has high Anemo resistance, and then the other is the Geo, like, uh, bot. it's a bot, it's like the... Uh, the field generator, and I do believe that has, like, geo resistances, so it gets them as well. So they aren't perfect, perfect, as you cannot, uh, like, work with every team on them. But they are much better than before, since, again, they're not affected by Hydro, so they don't ruin your reactions or stuff. And they're not completely immune to their elements, at the very least. Right. Uh, as for any mechanics introduced in the area, I like the hit the structure at the correct point, you know, the stabilizer thingy. Um, and the water plants the, that hide hid stuff in where uh, that hid stuff inside of them were pretty nice. Uh, as for the underwater stuff, there wasn't like not much here. The only big area is around the fortress, and that's about it. The other one is just a straight line. A lot of verticality, just uh, like the first uh, area, like you'll be down at the bottom at the <clears throat> you'll be at the bottom of the sea exploring but then you'll miss so much stuff in the different layers that the sea allows since there's no gravity here right so 
yeah, it, it was okay. Like the fortress area was cool. I liked the. I kind of liked and hated the spotlights, um, but uh, the, and but that's about it. Uh, we'll see most likely a much bigger uh, area from leaks as we've seen on four point two. So that's nice. Um, yeah, the Jellyfish uh, is by far the best ability, by the way. It has a low cooldown, it does a ton of damage, basically one-shots almost everything. It has insane AoE, and it can break rocks. So, except for specific puzzles, there is no reason to use um, any other ability. Um, so that's that. Um, here I have a special note. It says, explain the hydroculi hydroculized thing. So... I didn't write a script for a script file for this, but I wanted to mention this. While I was streaming, um, I noticed very much while exploring that holy fuck, there are so many hydroculi. Just I turn my camera, hydroculus. I turn my ha camera, hydroculus. I move a step, hydroculus. And yeah, I explained this on stream is that they, the thing about this hyd hydroculi. It's not really a problem about this area, but when, when this expansion is this small and they have a quota to meet, it kind of hits. So, you know, people speculated that as areas, as we marched on the nations, we would expand, we would have more, uh, more oculi to get and offer to the statues. And this was true up until now, where Fontaine has the same amount of, of oculi as Sumeru. But the thing is that the way that Fontaine is and how small some of, especially this expansion, but small it is in general, the thing is that, oh my god, the you have to put the hydroculi somewhere, right? You have a quota to meet, but the area isn't that big. So there's, there's hydroculi everywhere you look. And, you know, that, that, this was a note that I wanted to make. And yeah, like, the, again, the area is very small and... I mean, even the like the floating structures and stuff don't allow you to place hydroculi just anywhere compared to I don't know some some like Sumeru. Anyway, the thing is that again with the small size of the area and again needing to meet a hydroculi quota, this wasn't good. Is <laughs> this isn't good? Where again there's oculi everywhere you look. <laughs> but yeah, like this is the problem with the amount of stuff where they didn't want to reduce the amount of hydroculi in general in Fontaine. But hey, what can you do? Eh, again, it's a note. It's not a. It's not a complaint. It's not really uh, a positive thing. It's a. It's a note to make about this. That, that's that's what I wanted to say. Anyway, yeah. Um, again, the fortress was cool. I like that you can kind of know when you have uh, when you have done everything in it because there are exactly enough chests and quests to allow you to buy everything in the shops. Um, although. I hated the f abandoned zone because it takes so long to switch the doors. Also, if you don't understand the mechanic, you're gonna waste more time. It was very annoying to search for stuff there. Um, and yeah, I, I also mentioned the spot, the search lights. It's a cool idea, and it starts the world quest. And when I got caught by the search lights, the gigantic list of quests uh, it might block was so funny. Um, so yeah, but it can be a bit annoying to, if you're just calmly exploring close to the fortress, like getting uh, the starfish for Nouvellet, or just challenges and anything, right? Um, like there's chests there, like if you get caught, it's can, it can be very annoying to be put in if you don't do the quests. I don't know what stops it, I don't remember if it's the world quest that stops the spotlights from seeing you, or the Archon quest, I would guess the world quest, uh, but yeah, like it can be a bit annoying. Overall... It was a fine expansion to Fontaine. It would have been nice if it was bigger, um, but that's about it. Uh, also, fuck the Paimon borders. What is up with Fontaine having the shittiest Paimon borders? There is one that literally cuts a mountain in half. Like, what? Man. Man, oh man. I fucking hate these borders. Seriously. And so, let's finish up with the main event. There's nothing really else I can say about the area. I, I told you about the quest. Side quests-wise, it was okay. There are some cool ones. There are some okay, fine ones. There are some... There's a lot of hidden chests compared to the previous area, honestly. Like, way, way weirder... Uh, way weird secret chests than the previous area. Um, and yeah, like, what can I say? Like, anything else? Exploration was cool. I, I like the floating cubes. What can I say? So, to the main event we go. Starting with the story again. I 
genuinely haven't been more disappointed than before on an event story. It started so well. The first two parts were just a cool bunch of people, of friends, of characters having fun in the festival, doing cool stuff, but the first frame that I saw of the reused model from the summer event, I knew that they would completely turn the story towards that bitch. And I hoped I was wrong, and that it would be just a small side story, but holy shit, the entire third and the final animated cutscene were about her. Why? What is the entire point of the fucking festival? Like, I was so expecting a nice cutscene, which would have been a compilation of the characters doing stuff like being in groups, hanging around the festival, but nope! Nope, the fucking cutscene was there about the Oceanid. Oh my god, fuck you. And it was just so clear because of the reused model. I Again, I have never been more disappointed. This could have been the best event story, and they completely, completely destroyed it for me in the last part. Sorry, I couldn't care less about this bitch. And they tried to make her lore, le lore relevant by making her the fairy of Springvale. Fuck off, I don't care. I was excited to see characters interact with each other and then you completely fuck it at the end. Sorry, she appeared for less than two minutes in total in the previous parts. Thus, I do not fucking care about her. I'm sorry. How? Just how can you fuck up a story like this? Because, I don't know if you know... But most of the time, a story's ending very much makes up for 50% or more of how good and how much people will like the story. A bad ending just makes the story bad and people will not like it as much as if you had a good ending. So turning the focus of the story completely away from the festival and the characters themselves at the ending, at the, at the last a third of the story, ruins the story's quality and my likeness of it. Of it. Like, I'm sorry, I, I must say this. Like, at least other times, like, the, the random as fuck NPCs are a bit more involved in the story parts. But here, it's not the fucking case. <laughs> and again, I, I expected it to be a side story. Okay, she can be the fairy of Springvale. Okay, we, we fix her problems and everything. We, we get her up with the old man. Okay, and then make the last animated cutscene about the festival. But nope. Not at all. And I'm like, what? And this is supposed to be the anniversary patch? Other anniversary patches had nice interaction with characters, you know? Huh? Oh boy. What a fucking dog shit story. I'm sorry, it sucked. I was so happy. Two parts in, I'm like, oh my god, yes, yes. It's a, it's a sto story about the event and the characters. Last part. Oh. I was clueless. <laughs> anyway. As for the minigames, we have three here. The mandatory shitty combat minigame that was very boring. A dart toss minigame, which was okay, slightly boring still, and I would have liked if they had used the bow aiming camera instead of this overhead one. Uh, but this one was harmless, a bit annoying on controller, uh, with how the controls work a bit. And then the last one uh, was, going uh, was going to a specified place and pairing a broken painting with the scenery. Uh, harmless as well. Um, I would have liked something more gameplay intensive, I guess I will call it, uh, but it didn't hurt, but these didn't hurt the experience. Uh, so thankfully, the mini games weren't horrendous, uh, but they were far from adding something to the to the event, honestly. Uh, and as for the free weapon, because I guess I can review that, it's interesting. I hear it's um, worse than something like Prototype Amber on Duvillet. Um I guess it's kind of nice on Risley, but. What, he doesn't necessarily need energy recharge himself. So I can't really... Th yeah, and I can't th think of any other character that would really like this weapon. So, eh, it's okay. It's it's a weapon that might find some use at some point. But it's not really that great. Anyway, um, and that's it. As an ending overall, too long didn't watch, I guess. Um, Act 3 of the Arkham Quest was not good. It had a good idea, but it wasn't executed well. And then only the second half of Act 4 really did something. The exploration area, while small, was fine to explore. And then the main event lacked in super interesting minigames and like yeah, immersive minigames, I guess. Uh, but they didn't hinder the experience unlike others before. And the story was completely ruined by the last third quest. And that's it. Uh, like the video if you liked it. Sub to the channel. 
uh, to help it out and follow me on Twitch for da- for daily as much as possible streams because it seems that something is haunting me and it's not allowing me to stream. I fucking stream like two days this week, man. And then I fucking, uh, fucking health issues. <laughs> Don't worry. It, it, we're all good now. That's why I'm recording. Um, anyway, for next videos, the, I'm working on the, uh, the rapid fire character review, uh, which we're gonna do. So except, uh, expect that next. And then people, uh, 4.2 is almost out. And I would like to, I guess, kind of like say it from now. We will be doing a like stream before when the servers go down. Um, I will reveal some more details on stream or perhaps in a future video. Um, but I hope I can, you know, inform you that, you know, when 4.2 is going to be up, we're going to be pulling like fucking 400 wishes on Furina that I've been saving. Thank you for changing the C2 to the C6. Mm, I could have pulled Grizzly, anyways. <clears throat> but yes, like I wanted to mention that we're going to be doing a big stream when the servers are down, playing some stuff until they're up and then doing a huge pool session. And that's it. Um, goodbye. I hope to see you in another video.